Well, good afternoon, lovely ladies and gentlemen. Steve Collins coming to you from gorgeous and trotted Snow Canyon in Utah, the second most powerful, passionate, purposeful coach and speaker in, in the, the world. world. <laughs> Thank you. I got my honey to hold the camera today again. Thank you, Angela, for that. Do you Genshai? Do you Genshai? Let's talk a little bit about that real quick. So some folks have asked us about the conference that we are attending and the idea behind it. And truly, it's a philosophy of life. You've heard a lot of people say over the years, knowledge is power, knowledge is power. It's thrown around like rhetoric, knowledge is power. Nobody questions it. Just like the stupid saying, you can't have your cake and eat it too, that I made a video about a couple of weeks ago. Why the heck would you have cake if you can't eat it? It's just a limiting belief. So let's have a little conversation around knowledge is power. Knowledge is not power. Do you realize you could graduate with a PhD from MIT and move into your mom and dad's basement and literally live there playing video games for 30 years and your knowledge is not power at that point. Your knowledge is not power at all. Your knowledge is just sitting there useless and worthless because it's not being utilized. So knowledge is not power. What is Genshai? Genshai is an ancient word that carries with it a profound philosophy that is truly worthless unless it's lived out. And that philosophy is this. I will never treat, Genshai means this, I will never treat another person in a manner that would make them feel small, including myself. Let me say that again, take that in. Genshai means I will never treat another person in a way that would make them feel small, including myself. You know, that's a tough part of it, the including myself. Uh, Jesus said something very profound in teaching people how to relate to others, he said, um, love others as you love yourself. Love others as you love yourself. And most toxic people, most haters, most people with aggressive, intense anger issues are truly angry with themselves and maybe don't see themselves in the light that they were created to be. Maybe they're judging themselves on a mistake that was made that was devastating. Maybe they're looking backward in the rearview mirror of their life instead of looking forward. And there's just a lot of anger in there. So loving themselves isn't even an option. So you can't even expect these folks to begin to love other people. So do you Genshai and should you? What would that look like to treat others in your life? What if you made that commitment this day? In fact, I'm gonna challenge you to make that commitment for this weekend. See if you can live your life to not speak or treat or move towards anybody, to not treat anybody in a way that would make them feel small, including yourself. So if you are looking at how you can live this out, it really becomes a conversation of awareness about the other people in your life. You enter into a conversation in your own mind, as I addressed yesterday, if I spoke to you with the words you used to speak to yourself in your own head, would we still be friends or would I be an enemy? Sometimes we are our worst enemy with the conversations we have in our head. So it begins with this awareness that all people are worthy and deserving of being treated a certain way because each person is a unique, special, divine expression of God's nature and character, making each person unlike any other person on the planet. Think about that. No two fingerprints on this earth are the same. You are uniquely and divinely created with a certain set of gifts and talents that no other person has the opportunity or even the ability to manifest in this earth the way that you do. You have that ability. And the challenge is most people are gripped with fear because they don't want to stand out and let that brightness inside them shine. Most people are fearful of others judging them so they hide that light they hide that uniqueness and attempt to blend in instead of allowing themselves to just stand out and be who you were created to be using your unique gifts and talents here's the key in service to other people I'll wrap it up with what Zig Ziglar said to bring it all home he said you can have anything in life you want if you'll just help enough other people get what they want how can you help enough other people get what they want at the highest level possible you do it simply by maximizing your gifts and talents that are unique to you. 
I'm not worried about people in my coaching program bringing up their weaknesses. We want to make their strengths so dominant that their weakness is no longer even a part of the conversation. Because when somebody is flowing in their gifts and strength at a maximum level, you don't even see weakness because now you can hire for weakness. You can leverage for those weak spots because you're shining in that brilliance that you were created to shine in. So do you gen shy? Do you gen shy? Do you treat other people in such a way if we reverse this equation and gen shy meaning I will not treat someone in a manner that would make them feel small, including myself. What if you reverse that and got intentional? I will treat others magnificently and I'll do the same for myself. That's my challenge for you guys this weekend. See if you can take the Gen Shy philosophy and actually put it to work. Have a great Friday, guys.